Hey everybody, it's Mark, September 4th, 2016. And uh, today we are back in the hot zone in our usual research area. And uh, me and Susan came out to, she had never seen this nest before. This is probably one of the more elaborate hidden nests that I had covered. Uh, those who were monitoring Sasquatch researchers of the American Southwest today saw the still pictures that I caught uh, from several encounters we had getting back in here. Now, interesting thing, we came up here today, and on our way here to this hidden nest, this huge, massive den, this is like one of the most impressive dens ever that I ever found. Something big was walking maybe about 20 yards below us, 15 yards maybe, and I couldn't really see it, but we could hear it, and it was it was bipedal. And uh, I caught a glimpse of some brown hair, and it was really quiet. We don't know if it was a human or what it was, but it, it, it was it, it was it was a it was a hominoid. It was bipedal, big, and it looked like it it had brownish hair as it passed by us. Now, oh shit! So, so we think as he was here, but as we left, oh. But if, for those of you that remember it, it's still here. There's the big giant log, it creates the opening to go down in there. And in there is his cage. Massive, massive amounts of uh, wood to build this beautiful, impressive den. This is probably the most impressive one I've ever been in. If you want, Susan, you can go ahead and poke around in there, it's clear. I'm going to go up top and get a picture from the roof. Uh, <clears throat> there is a cave right up here I got a show that she needs to know of. Um, but yeah, this is, uh, that, that Sasquatch actually had the color of her hair. And it was big, whatever it was, and it was moving about 15 yards below us. And we stopped because we heard it going, do, 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 as we were coming this way. And, uh, it was brown, whatever it was, and it kept moving and didn't respond to my... My overtures, it, it's very quiet, so. So here's the other side of it. And it's still here after. It looks like a little opening was created here. This all used to be covered here to get back in there. And so let me, uh, let me do a little climbing and get up top so we can... See how the roof is held up. Oh, yeah. Look at this. This is the most impressive, massive, hominid, Bigfoot nest I ever found. And like Susan was saying, I can't believe you actually found it. Because if you look around, it was a miracle that I did find it because there's no trail anywhere. There is no easy access anywhere here to get up here this is actually where I lost my watch and so forth never did find it they probably heard it beeping at night I never did find it after all those years but uh, were you able to get up here and look at the roof yeah, yeah. Amazing. <laughs> it's amazing I mean no human would do this and it gives you total cover from aircraft or anything because you really can't be seen from any direction at all you are completely secluded in here 360 degrees and this is a so this is a crown achievement and uh she had to know where it's at and how to find it because this is very important uh documentation for this uh den to know where it's at and uh, here's the rear entrance See? That is where a Bigfoot lives, not a human. There is no signs of human activity in all the years since. I found this in 2013, by the way. The original video, I found that and got the steel out here where the Bigfoot was sitting up on the rock watching me. It was called Last of October Research. It's on my uh, channel, so you can scroll down to Last of October Research. 
And then I did a few follow-up videos. The, la the last time I was out here, I did a, uh, a video called Let's Clear Some Air. And it was about how that Bigfoot came out kind of a little cloaked. But, yeah, that's a impressive amount of engineering. Look at that. I mean, look at the size of these logs to do this. Just huge logs bending, twisting, and just weaving. Basically piling it, but it, instead of just building a pile, it's almost like everything was laid or woven through in a way to kind of make a jigsaw puzzle to get down in there, to build a roof over the, uh, over the, the, the little uh, den is what I call it. And uh, even sitting back behind it here, in the dirt, you're completely concealed. Oh. Oh, no, I don't mind if about your phone. I just thought I heard something else. Because uh, whatever it was was down there. Yeah. Whether it was human, I think it was a Bigfoot. I think that he heard us coming this way, and he went the other way. He didn't want to respond. It was brown, kind of a reddish-brown color. And we got a glimpse just for a second. But we heard him, and he kept moving. Two, two, two. And again, there's no trail back here. There's no, I mean, listen, it, it's quiet, quiet forest. There's nothing out here. No hikers, nothing comes back here. And uh, so we ran across somebody, be it a hiker or a Bigfoot. But based on what we or what I saw, just a glimpse, it looked like brown fur. And it was heavy. It was boom, 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 just like just like if it was moving like 15 yards down from us, just moving, and I saw the brown hair. And then I was like, it's just up the way here. So, I mean, we were, so as we were coming to it here, he was leaving. So he's been here, but it doesn't look like anything like dramatic has been added to it because it's so structurally sound that it'll last for years to come. I'm just going to see, this is kind of dangerous standing on the roof, but I just want to see. Oh yeah, it's still pretty, uh, look at that, it's still pretty structurally sound. Whoop! God, they build, when you find Bigfoot homes, man, they, they build these things to last. This is amazing. You look at the the, the twisting all these giant logs together is just amazing. Did you want to get a picture of me while I am uh, standing on the roof? Yeah, I've been getting pictures of you. Oh, okay. Do one like right here. While I'm looking down in the den down here. And it's a nice little comfy home. No spiders, no snakes. Didn't run across any type of wildlife. But I believe that we were traipsing through the forest coming this way and uh, we spooked him and he left. We made him leave his home. But again, no one comes down here. This is uh, so secluded. This is our... Uh... So yeah, this is the most impressive Bigfoot den. I'll probably never ever run across anything like this again. It's just such a neat, uh, neat find. I said, if you work your way around mm -hmm. and you come down here, you can come down the rear end. It's just like an escape hatch. You can enter in that way or enter in down here. Um, yeah, this is amazing that it's somebody's put in the time and effort to do such a thing. And I know it's not human because it's just too big. It's just too darn big. It's just too big to build something like that. Come in and Looks like he, they moved it a little so that they have three ways they can come in. Like running in the center of it too. Yeah, and the entrance one there, it's mm -hmm. been placed, it's like the door. And then that mess over there, how they twisted all that is just, uh, that's crazy. That is just crazy. All of these big logs to just build the roof and stuff, so. Really happy about it, so. Oh, anyway, so. We're going to continue to poke around. I'm going to see if I can go look. Now, just over here, Caddy Corner, just around the corner, there's a cave. It goes into the big underground in a big boulder. 
And I think they utilize that in the winter on days that it rains. Although this will give you good cover. Um, no sign of fire pit. No fire. You know, if the human builds something this elaborate, you would think they'd have a fire pit, right? Well, there's no, no signs of fire anywhere. And this is such a foreboding area with all the scrub oak and stuff that you're surrounded by. If you were to start a fire, you'd probably, probably start a forest fire. Because their sparks have nowhere to really escape, you know. I mean, you're just surrounded by by uh, trees and shrubbery in every direction. So, I'm going to go real quick, see if I can get a picture of the cave. And then, we'll, we'll uh, just hang out for a little bit. And hopefully that guy backtracked us and comes back here. I'm almost sure it was a Bigfoot. I mean, I, I like look back at Susan... Because I heard him going, dude, 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 right below us. And she was looking right in his direction. I pointed, I was like, do you see that? And she's like, what? And I was like, it looks like he has brown fur on. Somebody has a fur coat or something. But she didn't see it, unfortunately. But uh, we're going to have to head back the way it was to get out of here. Okay, now. Uh, uh. Whoop. Anybody home? Coming through. There it goes. There it is. That club is still in there. Big club. You could, you could live in this. I actually thought about occupying this if the day that uh, zero day arrives, if it ever does. Blocking it off, but it's a nice little cave. So, see from like, let's say a flare helicopter, Bigfoot can crawl right in here, hide. If you hear something coming in his nest, come right back in his little cave. So, that's another reason I knew that this was not a uh, human-built Bigfoot, nest because... See, looking right there, you can't even see it. <coughs> it's blended into the environment so well that just within five feet of it, you can't see anything. It is because it's such a thick forest, you just can't see it. So, um, those, we had to, sh I had to show her where it was, show her what the area is all about. So she can document it in case something ever happens to me. They know where to come looking for me. <laughs> I go missing. Here's where I used to gift, right here. Under this little outcropping here. You could see up here where a hawk regurgitates its food. See all that? That's regurgitated dead kill from a hawk or a bigger eagle maybe. Some type of raptor. And they just throw all that up or shit that out. It's nasty stuff. So anyways, I used to leave apples right here. Lots of them over a period of years. And, uh... See, check that out. <laughs> they, uh... They would take them. I'd come back and the apples would be gone. Um, nothing. No cores or anything. So, I mean, it was really cool that... Coming here over the years... I haven't been here since that last video that I did called, uh, Let's Clear Some Air. Where I was talking about cloaking and possibilities that happen. Alright, so I get down here, get out of the sun.
Something was making a, a noise back to me over there. I don't know what that was. It could be that, that same individual. See, this little ravine runs through here. There's more markings by this big tree here, which is really cool. Um, but it's, like I said, it's such a hidden area that, as you can see, looking up, there's just nothing in any direction to allow someone to find this nest. It was a truly amazing feat that, uh, or coincidence, I should say, it was pure luck that I found it. But that's what it's all about. This is, you have to get back in the forest and you have to do bushwhacking in these really crazy places where like people are like, I'm not going into that mess. And get back in here a couple miles and once you get back in here, this is what you run across are these amazing den finds. Um, I mean, so, you know, I've shown a lot of the structures that I get over the year, the different X's, the typical stuff that you, we all see stars and so forth. But dens are the four main components that I have been able to show over the years is uh, den, den building. Um, and as you can see, this is just such a perfect area for it because there's no... Most people will be like, I'll break a leg getting through that. Well, that's the... That's how you find them. That's where you find the foots. Is in areas where humans just don't like to go. It's just too foreboding. Now I'm gonna try and get another call here real quick and see what happens. you liked my Bigfoot calls. <laughs> That's years in the making. <laughs> All right. I got to get out of that sun because we're hitting in the evening so the sun is on the uh, east side over there going on the other side of the canyon so we're starting to get um, a little bit of sun pointing on our way so we're going to we're just going to hang out for a little bit and see what kind of uh, activity shows up, listen to the sounds. So I'll probably film a secondary segment of that, alone doing that, and then we've got to head out of here before it gets too dark. So, Because the problem with this type of terrain, uh, in the dark, you will break a leg or twist an ankle. Something bad could happen to you. So we're going to have to keep track of our time as the sun's setting. But we're going to hang out and I'll do a secondary segment. So... For September 4th, this is den number four, uh, recon and reinspection, and it is still here, and that's good news. So, that'll be it for Colorado Sasquatch Research for September 4th, 2016.